In this video, I show how to carefully and easily test and compare different cues for cue ball deflection. Anytime you use side spin, the cue ball does not go straight. For example, when you hit the right side of the cue ball to impart right side spin, the cue ball squirts to the left and swerves back to the right some. The amount of squirt depends on the amount of side spin and the shaft properties. And the amount of swerve depends on the amount and type of spin, shot speed and distance, and ball and cloth conditions. For more information and demonstrations, see the links in the video description. The net effect of squirt and swerve is called cue ball deflection. Obviously, to aim effectively when using side spin, you need to know how to compensate for these effects. Every shaft creates a different amount of cue ball deflection. In past videos available at the links in the video description, I have tested and compared several carbon fiber shafts, including the Predator Revo, QTEC Synergy, and White Carbon. In this video, I test and compare a 12.75 mm Player's Solid Maple Q as a baseline, an 11.9 mm Predator Z3, an 11.8 mm Predator Revo, a 12.4 mm Revo with a harder triangle tip, another 12.4 mm Revo with the standard Victory Soft tip, and a 12.9 mm Revo. Here's the setup for the test. I have a piece of paper taped to the headrail with black lines to help verify accurate and consistent cue alignment. And I have a printed ruler taped to the footrail to measure cue ball deflection from the center of the table. The ruler can be printed from the link in the video description. Observing where the cue ball hits the ruler gives the measured cue ball deflection for each shot. The cue ball is placed on a donut on the center line of the table. It helps to use a striped ball or any marked ball to help guarantee accurate and consistent Q-tip placement during the test. I'm using an elephant practice ball and I will aim every shot with the center of the tip pointing at the middle of the left side of the red circle. This doesn't result in maximum spin, but the spin is more than what is used on most shots. The black lines are on the sides of the Q when it is aligned straight up table with the tip in the correct position. When checking my aim for each shot, I make sure the center of the tip is on the red circle and I glance down to make sure my cue is centered between the lines. This helps ensure an accurate and consistent line of aim with the same amount of side spin for every shot. Each tip was shaped to the same dime radius to give the same tip contact point for each shaft. I test each shaft at both slow speed and fast speed. The slow speed shot is created with smooth acceleration over one quarter of my bridge length. It is a little faster than lag speed. With a center ball hit, there is no cue ball deflection, so the cue ball hits at the zero mark on the rail ruler. The fast speed shot is created with smooth acceleration over three quarters of my bridge length. This speed sends the cue ball off the end rails three times from the headline to the foot line. Again, with a center ball hit, there is no cue ball deflection. Here's what the slow speed shot looks like with side spin, with the cue ball returning to the headline. Here's what the fast speed shot looks like with side spin, with the cue ball going four rails ending between the foot line and the center line of the table. You don't need a testing machine or robot to get accurate, consistent, and meaningful results. You just need to take enough attempts to get plenty of good shots to average. You should include a shot only if the speed is correct based on how far the cue ball travels. You can also help verify cue alignment by how much spin you impart based on where the cue ball hits the second rail. For each shaft and each speed, I took about 20 shots and kept only the best 5 for finding the average cue ball deflection. I will show all the results in the next section, but here are the 5 shots for each shaft and each speed. Notice how consistent the speed and rebound angles are for each. If you get bored watching the shots, skip ahead to the next section to see the results.
Here are the results. For each shaft, I show the average cue ball deflection in inches for the best five shots each. The measured deflection for each of the five shots in each category was very consistent, so these average numbers are reliable. As expected, the cue ball deflection is much greater for fast speed shots. But even at slow speed, using some of the lowest cue ball deflection shafts on the market, cue ball deflection is far from zero. The solid maple player shaft has more cue ball deflection than the LD shafts, but all shafts have cue ball deflection. The largest deflection at slow speed was 30% more than the smallest. And at fast speed, it was about 60% more. Here are the clips overlaid so you can visually see the difference. With the same aim, side spin, and speed, the two shafts obviously send the cue ball in different directions. The deflection numbers would be less with less side spin and with shorter shots, but if you want to be accurate when aiming with side spin, you must be able to compensate your aim for deflection. If you want help with this, see the links in the video description, especially the System for Aiming with Side Spin, or SAWS. Comparing the two 12.4mm Revos, there was a slight difference in performance. This could have been due to the tip hardness differences between the triangle tip and the standard Victory Soft tip but it could also be due to slight manufacturing differences in the shafts. It is also interesting to note that the smallest diameter Revo shaft created slightly less cue ball deflection than the larger diameter Revos. More shaft and mass does create more cue ball deflection, but it is possible to manufacture larger diameter carbon fiber shafts with less end mass using a smaller wall thickness. That's one reason why some carbon fiber shaft brands have less cue ball deflection than others. Regardless, the larger diameter Revos do have slightly more cue ball deflection, or at least the ones I tested do. If you ever want to compare shafts on your own, now you know how to do it. It does take some care, but once you have everything set up, it goes quickly and easily. It helps to record with a video camera like I did, but you can also just have somebody else watch and record where the cue ball hits the rail ruler. Give the test a try, and good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.